Hi, this is Carly Opson at the University of Arizona, and I wanted to make a short video for my students in uh, CERP 590, Single Subject Research Design, to kind of help explain for them the differences between the sections of their research proposal that would be the behavioral definitions and dependent variable definition and independent variable definition, the procedures sections on general procedures, baseline, and probe and intervention phase, and the data collection and analysis section that describes the dependent, independent variable and social validity. Okay. And also maybe offer some advice for students who are incorporating function-based intervention or some consultation procedure into their proposals. So we're going to look briefly at a proposal uh, for this class that was written by Elizabeth Allen several years ago. And the focus of her proposal was reducing obsessive behavior in a student with autism. Really interesting piece. Um, I remember it as she developed it and as we talked about it. I've posted this for you so that uh, you can work through it, but let me point out a few things, and uh, it's a good model for you for uh, for your proposal. And you'll see that the proposal also follows the project evaluation criteria pretty closely in terms of the methods section. So she has the participants description. In this case, it is one participant. So if you're working with an individual instead of a group, uh, this is also a nice model. Great description of the setting. Very careful and detailed description of the setting. Nice description of materials and equipment. And she's going to be doing a token economy. And so she didn't describe necessarily the process of the token economy but what was required in terms of actual physical materials and equipment to conduct the token economy. So here we come to the behavioral de definitions um, of the dependent and independent variables. And I know that's easy to somewhat, well, actually, I don't know. This, this part probably is not as, get, doesn't get as confused with those other two pieces. But to some degree, we're breaking apart some pieces when we take apart the behavioral definitions, the procedures for baseline and intervention, and the data collection and analysis. In this section, the behavioral definitions, we just want to, I just want you to provide a, a observable and measurable definition of the behavior. And I think we've all worked that out in previous posts. You can see she then has a, this is a really nice example of uh, the experimental design section, except that I think she does not rule out various versions of experimental designs. Then in the then we come to the procedure section. So I think the probably the greatest confusion comes between the procedure section and the data collection and analysis section. So in the procedure section, this is a really this is a really good example of um, separating the two phases for a function-based intervention or a consultation intervention. So if you have a function-based intervention, you have an assessment phase, and you have an intervention phase. If you have a consultative intervention, you have a consultation phase and an intervention phase. So in this case, the student kind of explained in the general procedures section how there are two phases. Take a look at that. That should help. And then as far as the remaining general procedures, it is what is 
basically going to happen? What does, in, in short, in layman's terms, what is going to happen in your intervention? And that starts to look a, a somewhat like the independent variable, except that this describes across the entire conduct of your study. Okay. The baseline or probe section in procedures think about describing what should take place during a baseline session. So what is a baseline session going to look like? The staff member will walk in, the, the researcher will be in the room to collect data, the researcher will begin to collect data once the session has begun and the session will begin um, when the bell rings the session will begin at blank time um, it's gonna vary widely depending on what your intervention is but try to describe it such as you let's say you couldn't be there to conduct the study and somebody's got to walk in and run a baseline probe session for you that day and all you can do is write down what it is they're supposed to do. And for some of you it's going to be really simple. Um, for instance, I think uh, one of the Beverly's is doing an intervention in which uh, counseling clients will receive a, uh, a reminder email of their visits. So during baseline, she's going to write that they're, what the general usual procedure is for making appointments with clients and that there will be no reminder email. All right. During the intervention phase description, Imagine you're not going to be around that day and you need somebody to carry out an intervention session. So you need to describe for them thoroughly from beginning to end how an intervention session differs from a baseline session. And in this, in Elizabeth Allen's example, she does it, she does it very well. So take a look at that. Then is the data collection and analysis section. Um, frankly, these sections are usually very short on analysis and big on describing the data collection. What I would like to see here is a description of the dependent variable and how it's going to be measured and the kind of a practical description of how it's going to be measured. What's the measure? What is the measurement unit and how will it be collected and then how are you going to collect inner observer agreement on the dependent variable how are you going to make sure that that data is being collected accurately and then for the independent variable you're describing treatment integrity how are you going to collect treatment integrity data what is the unit and how exactly is it going to get done and then collection of data related to social validity. How are you going to collect that data? That is basically the end of the proposal. Right. So if you have further questions about how to distinguish between those sections in your proposal, send them on to me. Um, I know some people had sent pieces of the proposal earlier or their entire proposal for me to look at. I haven't had a chance to look at those. I will try to back up and look at them. Um, send me a reminder email if I have. If you wanted me to look at your proposal and I indicated that at that time I didn't have the time, um, remind me and I will certainly try to carve out the time to give you some feedback.
Good luck on your proposals. Get hold of me if you have questions.